Throughout human history, there have been many deadly outbreaks of viruses and plagues, such as Black Death that killed 30 to 50 percent of the European population in the 14th century or White Death that occurred in the 19th century and killed about 25 percent of the European population. There are thousands more deadly viruses, but the deadliest in human history is rabies. Before we talk about how rabies works and how it transmits, we need to understand its biology. When viewed under a microscope, it looks like bullet-shaped viruses and that is because it is a member of the Rhabdoviridae family. Like every other virus, rabies contains a lot of genetic material and proteins. The genetic material is made up of RNA which gives instructions for the virus to reproduce. The capsid surrounding the RNA to protect the viruses and helps enter the host cells during infection. With the rabies virus, it also has an envelope, not for letters. This envelope is to help the virus attach itself to host cells. It made from the host cell membrane during viral budding. And lastly, glycoproteins, the bullet of the virus. They are proteins on the surface rabies and they enter host cells. Now that we understand the biology of the virus, let me tell you why rabies has a near 100% chance of death if the virus reaches the brain. We are going over the virus pathophysiology. Rabies is spread through a bite from a carrier. If their bite penetrates the skin and their saliva enters the muscle, you've been infected. The most prevalent wildlife carriers are raccoons, skunks, bats, and foxes. Domestic animals carriers include cats, cows, and dogs. Dogs are the most prevalent carriers, so exercise caution, whether wild or domestic. Rabies will progressively duplicate itself in muscle tissue until it reaches the central muscle nerve system, from where it will proceed to the host's central CPU, also known as the brain. Once they infect the brain, they will spread throughout the nervous system, affecting organs, hair cells, and salivary glands. Once the host bits another host and saliva reach another host, they will become infected as well. This is how rabies spreads from host to host. And if you believe your immune system will protect you if infected, you are mistaken. Rabies, despite being a lethal intruder, cannot be detected by the immune system once it enters muscle tissue. Rabies replicates relatively slowly and causes no warnings until it is too late. Once the infection enters the brain, it is over. To put this into perspective, after being exposed to rabies, you can go weeks or months without experiencing any symptoms. Rabies kills you in a matter of days, if not hours, after the virus enters your brain. You might be wondering how the rabies virus does this and what the symptoms are. To break it down, rabies is a viral disease, it is just an illness caused by a virus. Other common viral diseases are the cold, flu, and COVID-19. Rabies symptoms are divided into three main stages, prodromal, furious stage, and paralytic. The prodromal stages normally last between one and three days. The symptoms are flu-like, with fever, headache, fatigue, and pain at the bite site. Itching and pain around the bite site are also symptoms. For animals, they will exhibit only vague, nonspecific signals that intensify fast in the furious stage. The furious stage can last several days, a week, or even longer. This stage's symptoms include hyperactivity, excitation, hallucinations, hydrophobia, fear of water, aerophobia, fear of the air, and, on rare occasions, aggressive conduct. Patients may have convulsions, swallowing difficulties, and swallowing muscle spasms. For animal, it's a lot worse. The animal will exhibit violent behavior, which we refer to as mad dog syndrome, but it can also afflict other animals. During this stage of rabies, the animal gets angry and may use its teeth, claws, horns, or hooves aggressively in response to any provocation. The animal will be anxious with their pupils dilated. Noise may result in an assault. The animals will get past their fear of humans and other animals and attack. The paralytic stage is the final form of rabies and it's game over for afflicted souls. Once this stage is reached, the infected has a 99% chance of death. This stage usually follows the furious stage. Symptoms of this stage include weakness, paralysis, and a loss of coordination. The paralysis spreads quickly throughout the body, causing unconsciousness and death within a few hours. Animals will have the similar results, but with throat and masseter muscle paralysis, profuse salivation, and trouble swallowing. Dogs frequently drop their lower jaw in this stage. Up to 50,000 to 70,000 people die from rabies annually worldwide, with 99% of deaths occurring. In Africa, India, and South Asia, dogs account for the majority of rabies incidents. North America, Russia, and North Asia are the main locations for wildlife cases. Know that we understand how dangerous rabies is if left alone. We need to understand the history of early humans trying to counter rabies and what happened. 
To start off, rabies is one of the oldest known diseases with cases dating back over 4,000 years. To put this in perspective, this virus was around when the Egyptian pyramids was being built around 2580 BCE during the Old Kingdom period. Rabies vastly predates modern medicine for centuries. Like many subjects that humans don't understand, they made wild theories and methods to desperately avoid this horrifying virus. For generations, doctors, witch doctors, and desperate individuals have been trying to find remedies to save those who have been infected. The Greek physician Antaz thought that a hung man's skull might provide a cure. Physician and naturalist Celsus claimed in the first century that the only way to treat a disease once it manifested itself was to throw the patient into a pond and have them drink water from it. Not surprisingly, this was an attempt to treat the hydrophobia caused by rabies, but it didn't succeed. Roman physician Dioscorides made a significant contribution to medical research in the year 79 CE. Even though he knew that saliva could spread the rabies virus, he still thought that cauterizing a bite wound would stop the virus from spreading. This was untrue, the virus is located in the muscles themselves, not on the skin's surface. Religion attempted to provide a remedy in the 19th century. A legend about the Christian saint, St. Hubert used a golden key to drive out an evil spirit and heal a man who had been attacked by rabid dogs. St. Hubert became the protector of rabies. People started traveling to St. Hubert's shrine in hopes of being protected from this virus. Regretfully, this miracle was never repeated. However, there remained optimism because Louis Pasteur, a man, would bring about a global transformation. Pasteur created the rabies, cholera, and anthrax vaccines. He discovered the causes of spoiling, how to clean instruments before they do surgery, and imparted a wealth of knowledge about bacteria and illnesses. Saying that he is among the most influential men would not be a stretch given his impact and the millions of lives he saved with vaccines that we continue to use as role models. You may wonder how his team produced the vaccination and how effective it was. Before injecting samples into rabbits and monkeys, they physically collected the saliva and parts of the brains of rabid dogs kept in cages. A team member with a shotgun would be present to kill the dog and any other infected individuals throughout the sample collection process. You must recall how terrifying rabies is. Samples from the 12-day-old rabies-stricken rabbit's spinal cords were injected into an infected dog and tested for a stable, non-fatal type of rabies. Fortunately, the dog appeared to be getting better. The plan was to inject a host with a mild, non-lethal form of the rabies virus so that the body would begin producing antibodies. The body would already be aware of what to look for and have antibodies to destroy the virus if the actual rabies infection occurs in the host. Consider it as your fall-time flu vaccination. A nine-year-old kid called Joseph Beaster would be attacked by a rabid dog in 1885. Pastor tried the novel vaccine for the first time on a human host after much persuasion. Joseph survived because, fortunately, rabies has a lengthy incubation period before it kills a person and the vaccine had time to build up antibodies in his body. Pastor created a vaccine that could be used to stop the spread of rabies and cure infected host. This marked the day that no one would ever die for rabies, so we thought. Tragically, having an effective vaccine is never enough without the means to distribute it to the poorest areas or successfully educate others on proper procedures. I would like to take the time to explain the steps if you get bitten by rabid dog. First, wash the area with soap and water for 10 minutes. Second, try to secure the animal that bites you. They would need to test for rabies in that animal to see if you the vaccine. If not, then that's okay, don't punisic. Third, go to the ER ASAP and tell them what happened. They will inject a dose of rabies immunoglobulin close to the bite to reduce the chances of infection. Finally, you'll be given four doses of the vaccine over a month. These will train your body's immune system for preparing it to fight the virus. Rabies is one of the most dangerous viruses ever, and I hope everyone has a better understanding of how rabies works, how infection spreads, how the vaccine was created, and what to do if bitten. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more.